Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, Ron. Um, let's go with Bonnie. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, so this is a very self-explanatory poem. It's called Old Passports. Clearing out a shelf in my study to make room for a fresh stack of file folders, I found several expired passports I had long forgotten were there. When I opened them, I saw those old photos of myself staring at me, and memories of when they were taken came flooding back. The oldest, my very first, is from 72 when I was 28 and still using my ex's surname, even though we had already separated. I applied for it because I had decided to give Israel a try after spending a miserable year working at the New Haven Public Library, enduring an antiquated management and an anti-Semitic supervisor. I wanted to move to a place where I thought I would finally fit in find happiness and a more fulfilling life. Along with visa stamps from the state of Israel, there are those from Gatwick Airport near London about a year later that show the result of my experiment. The next one is from 79 and I'm now 36. Although divorced, I am still using my husband, my first husband's last name, preferring it to my own. I've got a slight smile in this photo wearing a silk blouse, black and white scarf, looking lawyerly from my position at a federal agency in DC. The only visa stamps are from Heathrow in London and re-entry into the US from a couple of trips I took with my then fiance and now husband. And the passport from 86, I am 43. And although married to my present husband, it's still in my ex's surname as I have been known by you professionally for many years already. I have a serious expression and I'm conservatively dressed in a dark brown silk shirt and camel colored suit jacket. I am working in Manhattan for a legal publishing house. My husband and I had finally managed to buy a home in commuting distance, New Jersey. The only visa stamps I see are one too faded to read and a US reentry from 87. In 98, I am finally using my husband's surname by this time, we are in California, having lived here since the end of 92, and I am looking very middle-aged at 55. I have become a mother, and my son is almost 10. During the years covered by this one, we have traveled as a family to many countries. There are stamps from Morocco, Turkey, Israel, Germany, the UK, and France, and all of the re-entries to the US. In 2008, at 65, I am truly looking like what they call a young senior. But I don't feel like one since I am an older mom and my son is only a college sophomore. My expression shows that I have mellowed slightly with my gentle, warmish smile. There are stamps from London and Paris, some from when we dropped our son for we dropped off our son for grad school in England and then came back a year later to see him graduate. I recollect we visited Israel again during this time, but by then the Israeli government had stopped stamping U.S. passports, instead providing separate visa sheets to accommodate those who might also be visiting countries antagonistic to it. My current one is from 2018, expiration 2028, and I am already 75. Now my sagging neck muscles and lower jawline show a clearly aged face despite my hairdresser's expertise in hair and brow color. No visa stamps in this one yet. Even before the pandemic hit us in 2020, we had stopped traveling because my husband's post-retirement startup has left us little free time and extra cash. But there are plenty of years left before it expires, and I'm still hoping it won't be my last. Thank you. Bonnie, wonderful. I, I have a soft spot for uh, the passports and the stamps. My first one, I was so excited to have to get to the point where I needed them to add pages to it so I could pick on more stamps. And then when I had to renew it and they took it from me, I was yeah. it was a loss. I, was really, I took photos of it, of course, and I've got all those. But 
but it's not the same. You know, hold that book, and I want to show that to my kids and stuff. So, but a new one has like a stamp from Machu Picchu and things like that in it. Wow. Which, it's not nearly as full, but it's got some cool ones, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy about them. But very, very, very interesting. Um, unless, unless somebody has decided that they um, or can raise their hand and uh, let me know, I think it's just. I would like to read one, and then I think we're going to have a song by Wendy to close. Oh, we do still have two others. Awesome. So let's go Let's go with Scott. And I see, Ann, you also raised your hand as well. And so we'll go Scott, Ann, myself, and then we'll close it with a tune. Why not? Do you guys remember um, the movie um, Polyester? Uh, directed by John Waters a long, long, about 30 years ago, was it? Maybe more. Uh, okay, either way. Um, this poem is called Why, Why a Second Marriage is Unlikely. The dream finds me explaining to my ex-wife, Amber, why she should call me Todd tomorrow. Scott, my birth-given name, reminds me of insanity defined by schizophrenia and OCD. 57 years I want to forget. Time for a new beginning. Scott is a boring dishwasher. Todd Tomorrow is a colorful character starring in John Waters' movie, Polyester. Start over. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, start over. Year one. But Amber says no and hops aboard her bicycle. From my bed, I leap through space to catch her, but she rides away. I fall to earth on my bedroom carpet, snapping two of my fingers into a painful V, like Spock flashing live long and prosper. Blood dripping down my face where my head hits the wall. Dream is over. Think about calling the hospital. <laughs> Excellent, Scott. Thank you very much. Um, and I did see your note there. I, I hadn't looked at it in a couple of minutes, so I did see that you wrote there. But go ahead, come off mute, and we're all muted. And uh, please share. It's the first note I've ever written in chat. I didn't know how to do it. <clears throat> Jennifer, thank you. I'm Copia. I'm Dopia. I'm in the lurch. Find my perch. I'll say it twice or thrice. Once. Nice. Open your ear. I'm pouring cheer. Copia, it's a female thing, got lots of sting. You can't void it even if you void it. I'm Copia, so flow with me, run with me, make three with me. My season's the reason, I'll carry the weight, call it gestate. Nine months later, see what we done? Can't rate her or hate her, I won this pun. Peanut butter your fly with my berry cry. Roll with my jelly, fill your belly. Spread the dread with fly and cry. Oh boy, meat, got to eat. Taste the deep state, too white the paint. The history quaint, bruise in my breath. This flow be rogue, be deaf. Capsizing lies. Telling the wise, triage the story, eat it to change it, verse it for glory, be it, don't is it, you, me, and we be three, the trinity comes, it's on our tongues, be three with me, I'm copia, I'm dopia, it's utopia. You got it. Wonderful. You got it. Um. Okay. Um, unless I missed anyone, I'd love to read one. And then love to have Wendy. Enid, you inspired me. I was looking through and found an, uh, an old poem that I actually wrote and then... Uh, 
put to music and put as a recorded meditation, um, my Insight Timer channel. But um, we said the word she, so pff, I went off and started looking for this. So um, anybody who understands uh, anything about meridian theory from acupuncture or anything like that knows there's two primary meridians that are very important. The Ren is the most yin of channels, and the Du, which goes up the spine, the most yang of channels. You think of Ren, you think of people in the, in the fetal position, the Ren channel goes down the inside of what is most to be protected and the yang goes along the outside of that which provides the most protection. So this one's called Ren and Du. And it is about my circuit of breathing. That I Connor, do. we're losing you. You're losing me. Don't lose me. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'm just... No, not. your screen is freezing and we're, we're only hearing every, every few words. Is that, heavy, is that happening for everyone? Well, that is a yeah. shame because what I have to say is very important. Um, <laughs> but what, what can I do? I'm not, I'm not in charge of the series of tubes that connects us all. Um, but this one's called Ren Du. And this is my circuit of breathing. And this describes how I breathe all day long. Slipstream of cool air like the white cotton candy stripe that floats over the aerofoil in the wind tunnel, cool and clear streaming along the rooftop of my mouth while equal, equal breath enters through my nose. Intention sets apart this action from the routine. I guide this breath along my throat, descending into and spreading out through my chest. Its energy fans out like spilt water on concrete on a hot day, the edges fading and drying quicker than the middle. Funnel of air descends and settles below my navel, a soft pillow curled up like a cat in its favorite window. Here, a dynamo erupts, fed by my cool intake. Pleasant personal combustion ignites as I pinch close my energetic gains, sparking my internal pilot light. Gathered, I utilize. I send, I direct, I build, and I am thankful. Directed to my spine, starting up the fire at the gate of life. My essence fires up, heating the fluid that functions. The steam arises to coat my insides, moistening, assisting in their work. The squeaky wheels grease. Double helix of realized potential surrounds my spine, aroused and rising. It won't stop until it reaches my mind. Entering just below my skull, it scours my thought. Like the last bits gathered to fill one last spot on the pan with one last cookie. Escape! What shall it take with it? The remnants of my derived power erupt between my eyebrows, taking along with it that which I permit, like 6 a.m. at the garage sale of my soul. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Enid. I'm glad you inspired me to read that. I love that poem. I haven't looked at it in two years. Okay, without further ado, I am very, very excited to hear when Wendy sing one more song. So Can please. I butt in for a second? Sorry? Can I butt in for a second? Oh, please, I Jennifer. I forgot to and thank you, Connor. And I forgot to thank Ron for inviting me to read. So I wanted to acknowledge you guys and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Of course, of course. I was I was say thank you afterwards, um, uh, but I'm glad you came on. Thank you very much, um, and thank you for all who attended. So, um, Wendy, take us out. Okay, uh, this song kind of 
came to me sitting in my backyard. I am something of a community activist. I'm not driven by party politics. I'm driven by community issues. So this song is really pretty much about me. It's called The Guardian.